good evening and welcome to Get Sleepy, the podcast where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. My name's Thomas and I'm your host. Thank you so much for tuning in. It really does mean a lot to have your company. Tonight, we'll journey into the world of Hugi. That's the Danish word spelt H-Y-G-G-E. And we'll travel to the heart of Scandinavia to learn more about this cosy word and experience its essence for ourselves. Before we begin tonight's story, I'd like you to close your eyes and picture the most comfortable winter setting you can imagine. One that brings you peace, warmth, and happiness. It could be when you're nestled beneath a thick blanket by a fireplace on a cold day, or reading a book in a comfy armchair by candlelight. It may be sipping on a hot drink in your favourite cafe, peering onto the street through the steamed glass windows. Or maybe it's wrapping gifts for loved ones with festive music playing in the background. Whatever the perfect moment you imagine might be, let these feelings of coziness, comfort, and contentment envelop you now. Stay in that pleasant sense of warmth and happiness as we move through our story tonight. And as you continue to relax and make your way towards sleep, feel yourself being wrapped in the comfort and coziness of this very moment. You're warm and safe in bed, and that is the essence of Hugi. There are many different ways in which one might explain what Tuge actually is. It's often linked to coziness and comfort, but also to friendship and togetherness, ritual and tradition. And really, it's hard to put into words what Tuge means. Like love or happiness, We struggle to describe it, but we know it when we feel it. It's the essence of safety and comfort, or the magic of the holidays you experienced as a child. It's like listening to a thunderstorm from the comfort of your bed with freshly laundered sheets like a familiar scent that stops you in your tracks and reminds you of a loved one, or a taste of the delicious pie your grandmother always makes. It's a sense of being home, no matter where you are. One might describe a particularly cosy-looking living room as being Hugely, or Hugo like. You can use the word to describe a lovely scarf, a family recipe, 
or a particularly nice candle. And yet, it's also something that can be done. You can reminisce about your wonderful weekend and the hoogalig time that was had by all. The written word can be traced back to the 1700s at a time when Denmark and Norway were part of a union. As a spoken word, its roots run far deeper. Examining these roots can help to establish a better understanding of what tuge truly means. In terms of etymology, Huge can be linked to older words, meaning to embrace, to give courage or comfort, and to think or consider. The modern word used today is typically translated as coziness. So whilst its precise origin is unknown, a combination of these paints a clearer picture. Huge is a feeling of comfort, physical, mental, and emotional. It's a time to be mindful, thoughtful, and considerate of those around you, as well as yourself. Huge feeds your sense of well-being, like a loving hug from an old friend. Being that it's linked to the enjoyment and traditions of each individual, it's entirely possible to experience huge year-round. One might feel it in July, at a potluck barbecue with friends and family, or at the dinner table in October as you share the events of your day over a homemade pumpkin soup. You might feel it in April, as you stand at a window and watch the rain fall outside. Or in January, as you settle in for your monthly movie night with friends. But Tugi is most commonly associated with the winter season. After all, it's during this chilly and festive time that so many of us celebrate the rituals and traditions that evoke feelings of warmth and comfort. It's during the holidays that we create the kind of magical experiences that live on in our memories. And it's through this period, too, that we tend to seek out our creature comforts the most. When days are short and the temperatures are icy, there's nothing quite like the pleasure of a warm blanket and a cup of hot chocolate. Perhaps this speaks to the mindset of the North when it comes to huge and well-being overall. Rather than bemoaning the coming of winter, it's preferable instead to find countless ways of embracing it. With a focus on huge, one might create endless opportunities to express gratitude in any season or circumstance. One of the best ways to really know what huge might look like and feel like is to experience it for ourselves. So, Let's do that now. Let's travel to Denmark and step into the coziest scene imaginable. Picture a wintry countryside. The hilly landscape is covered in a blanket of thick white snow. The days are short and though it's only late afternoon, the light is already fading. Step by step, 
you trudge along the flat, snowy path, relishing the comfort of your clothing. Your coat feels lovely and soft wrapped around you, offering warmth and protection. This warmth extends to your feet and hands by means of heavy boots and woolen mittens. Your scarf and hat are equally snugly. All around you, the light continues to dim. The falling snow becomes brighter against the dark blue sky. And you watch, enchanted, as it dances and twirls upon the horizon. The quiet stillness of your surroundings is punctuated only by the sound of your own boots crunching through the snow underfoot. In the distance now, you see your destination, a beautiful log cabin radiating golden light from its windows and smoke from its chimney top. It's encircled by huge fir trees, their emerald leaves brushed with white powder. Behind the trees, tall mountains look on in peaceful silence. It's like a scene from the front of a holiday card, inviting you to step inside this winter wonderland. Already, you're gaining a sense of what Hugi might be. And this feeling is only amplified as you shake the snow from your boots and enter the cozy log cabin. You remove your coat, along with your hat, gloves and scarf, and lay them across a mahogany stand in the entranceway. Taking off your shoes and socks, you replace them with fuzzy slippers laid out beside the door. Their design is playful, with giant white snowflakes on a vibrant red background. Small white pom-poms dangle from the top seam. You notice that your own name has been embroidered onto the right one which makes you realize that these are just for you. You feel a childlike sense of joy as you slip them onto your feet. Inside, your toes are toasty warm. Now you pause and admire the cabin's interior. Glossy wooden floorboards are covered with thick, luxurious rugs. The walls are painted a creamy off-white. To your right, there sits a beautiful red three-piece suite, just behind a rustic oak coffee table. Directly opposite the sofa is a crackling log fire encased with a stone fireplace. Its bright golden flames dance up toward the chimney, spreading light and warmth across the whole room. To your left is an open-plan kitchen with smooth marble countertops, lined with jars of various delights. At the end of the kitchen is a stove. A single pan sits atop an unlit burner. You walk over to it and find a large porcelain mug and a spoon positioned on a tray beside it. There's also an assortment of little jars. One jar 
contains tiny pink and white marshmallows, and another holds thick clotted cream. Three more reveal shaved curls of milk, dark, and white chocolate. One at a time, you bring each container towards your nose, closing your eyes briefly and taking in the sweet, creamy scents. The pan is full of cold milk. You turn on the heat and reach for a wooden spoon. You use it to stir the milk gently as it warms, forming swells and ripples across the surface. How nice it feels to slow down like this, to be so completely absorbed in the simple action of stirring milk in a pan. Occasionally, your attention drifts to the cozy feeling of your slippers, or to the sound of the crackling fire in the living room. Your gaze wanders to the window above the stove, where brilliant white snowflakes continue to twirl in the darkening night. And all the while, the sound and motion of your arm stirring the wooden spoon through the warming milk is soothing and lovely. Eventually, steam begins to rise from the pan, and tiny bubbles appear in clusters across the surface of the milk. Turning to the tray, you spoon a mix of chocolate shavings into the mug, and then carefully pour the milk over them. You stir the hot chocolate gently, delighting in the scents that waft up from the mug. To finish it off, you drop in a spoonful of clotted cream and top it with fluffy marshmallows. With mug in hand, you step into the living room and take a seat on the plush fabric of the sofa. Bringing your feet up towards you, you lean back into the ruby red cushions and gaze into the fireplace opposite. How mesmerizing it is, you think, the way the flames rise and fall from the glowing logs at their base, and the way the fire's warmth moves across your face. Even as you begin sipping the creamy hot chocolate, your eyes remain fixed upon the raw beauty of the fireplace. In this moment, you feel utterly content. You find yourself feeling a little reflective, too. Perhaps it's because the scent and taste of this wintry drink is filled with memory and meaning. You're reminded of happy moments from your youth that were steeped in love and kindness. You think of the warmth of family and friendship. These feelings wash over you as you drink sip by sip. This is Huge, you think to yourself. No sooner has the thought crossed your mind then you hear a gentle knocking at the front door. Having emptied the mug, you set it down upon the coffee table, climb off the sofa, and head to the door. When you open it, 
you're delighted to see a small group of your friends. Like you an hour ago, they are bundled up in thick winter coats, and their cold faces are partially hidden by woolen scarves and hats. They're a merry bunch too, laughing and joking about the temperature as they swap boots for slippers. They drape their outdoor wear across the wooden stand, just as you did. Then, one by one, your friends greet you with a long, heartfelt embrace. A hug that warms you from your smile to your slippers. Now the evening can truly begin. Two of your friends head into the kitchen, while another motions towards a record player in the corner of the room. She begins flicking through your record collection, occasionally poking fun at your taste in music, as friends do. That results in a bout of hearty laughter from all. The conversation flows so easily and naturally, as if you've never been apart. Eventually, your friend picks out a record that all of you can agree upon. She puts it on, and the first notes drift through the joy-filled room. Then, she comes to join you on the couch, where together you sit and listen quietly. There's something rather lovely about the sound of vinyl, you think, regardless of what's playing. Even before the music begins, you enjoy the sound of the table turning, the needle touching the grooves, and the crackle of the record. It fits the ambience of the evening perfectly. Your other friends enter the living room now, carrying a tray with delicious snacks. In the center of the coffee table, they set down a charcuterie board. There are thick wedges of all your favorite cheeses, along with sun-dried tomatoes, peppers, and olives, drizzled with oil. Their bright colors are vivid in the firelight. There are also thin slices of freshly baked bread beside a softening block of golden butter. Around the outside of the board, is a wonderful selection of sweet treats. There are swelled knots of sugared pastry, ginger snaps, biscuits dipped in chocolate, and much more. Each of you takes a plate and fills it with whatever you'd like. You eat slowly, savoring every bite from first to last. You're struck by how lovely this moment is. It feels wonderful to be surrounded by friends, enjoying the tastes, textures, and aromas of good food. Once you've finished the main course, you and your friends move on to the sweets and pastries you take a piece of buttery shortbread and a bite of soft yet crumbly fudge. One bowl in particular stands out amongst the others. It's bright red and homemade in appearance. Lifting it up to the firelight, you see your own name painted on the side. Glancing at your friends, 
you realize they've brought this special treat just for you. Looking inside, you see a kind of sweet that you haven't had since you were a child. You must have mentioned it to your friends at some point, and they remembered. The realization fills you with feelings of acceptance and care. You pick one out of the bowl and bring it to your lips. You enjoy it slowly and mindfully, basking in the familiar taste and texture. It's just as you remember it. To you, This is one of the tastes of your childhood, and it's magnificent. How lucky you are to have friends like this, who would make such a thoughtful gesture. As you sit together, reminiscing about times long past, you feel wholly connected to the people around you. A little while later, someone suggests playing a board game. Each of you helps to clean up the table, carrying plates and bowls into the kitchen and stacking them neatly by the sink. One of your friends begins setting up the game on the wooden table, reading the rules aloud and asking that you each choose a playing piece. Another friend kneels beside the fireplace, adding fresh logs from a wicker basket on the stone hearth. With a metal poker, he carefully arranges the logs amongst the burning embers. You walk over to the record player, where the sound of the music has been replaced by the needle on spinning vinyl. You stop the record and pick it up. It's a gentle procedure, requiring care and delicacy. In fact, your hands barely touch the outer edge of the circle as you turn it upside down and set it back upon the player. Then you lift the needle before slowly lowering it onto this side. Seconds later, music begins to play once more. You're about to sit down when you catch sight of the cabin window and the darkness that has settled outside. Even with the fire, the room would benefit from a little more light. From a wooden shelf positioned above the mantelpiece, you take down a set of white pillar candles resting on circular brass stands, along with a single box of matches. You position each one safely around the room. Then, you strike the match and light each candle. The candles illuminate the game board and the faces of your companions with their soft, golden glow. And now, you sit upon the fluffy rug between the hearth and the table, facing your friends. With the fire behind you, every inch of the board is visible. Although the sofa was luxurious, it somehow feels even cosier to sit like this upon the floor. You take off your slippers now that your feet are warm and toasty, and curl your bare toes into the fabric of the rug. Outside the cabin, 
the snow continues to fall, drifting idly in the evening breeze. It's a beautiful, wintry scene to behold, even more so when enjoyed from the warmth and comfort of the cabin. For the next hour or two, you and your friends play the board game, laughing, joking, and reminiscing along the way. From your seats around the table, you lean forward in turn to move your game pieces, roll the dice, and read out questions to the others. You are fully present experiencing the light-hearted fun of the moment. It occurs to you now that a new memory is being created, one that you will treasure in the years to come. You'll no doubt reminisce about this night down the road. How might you recall it, you wonder? Perhaps you'll think of that wonderful evening in the log cabin, with the blazing fire and warm toes, despite inches of snow outside. Or you'll remember the cosy night you drank hot chocolate, played board games, and listened to old records. The memory might flicker back when you're next stirring a pan of warm milk, lighting a candle in the darkness, or hugging an old friend. As the night draws on, some of you begin to yawn. The flames have faded away, though the charred embers left behind occasionally glow ruby red. Soon, each of you will head off to your respective bedrooms, where a deep and dreamy sleep awaits. Not before you hug once more and offer words of heartfelt gratitude for the pleasure of each other's company this evening. What a marvellous night this has been. Each of you takes a candle, exchanges your final good nights, and walks to a different door. One slow step at a time, you find your way to the comfort of your bedroom. Here, you place the candle upon the nightstand and change into silky, full-length pyjamas laid out upon the bedsheets. They're soft against your skin and a perfect contrast to the thick blankets. You slide into bed under the massive cloud-like duvet and snuggle down under the covers. Above your head, a circular window offers a view of the wintry landscape. You gaze through it into the pitch black night, where the snow dances so gracefully on the breeze. Such a scene only makes you feel even more grateful for the comfort and warmth of your bed. And now, it's time to rest. You take a deep breath in, and then let out a happy sigh allowing your eyes to close. Then, you drift off 
into a deep and comfortable sleep on this cozy night.